Hey everyone, it is Char from Char's Fashion Nation. I'm going to try this again. Um, <laughs> okay. One and two. And, okay. Take your tail yarn on the outside. Take your working yarn between these fingers. Have it like this. Pull it. Make sure these aren't too tight. It's three. And I find that doing this this way makes it go a lot quicker than any other way and like I was saying make sure that these aren't too tight because if you get these too tight on here you're not going to be able to get the other one through so kind of loosen that make sure it's loose enough but not too loose so that can happen Now you may see me use the same technique with uh, arm knitting, which I will link that video up here. Um, and I have to thank the History Bounding community on Instagram for being so very accepting of me. Um, especially uh, my Western Duster that I made. Uh, and Instagram has changed a couple of things so, so that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14 okay 15 16 17 19 and 20 which is what I originally started off with but I had to redo this okay now put your tail yarn to one side and I'm gonna try to leave it in my lap for a reason because now you're gonna be going this way behind your yarn loop it and you also want to make sure that you're able to hold that tail yarn down out of your way other than that you're gonna have a bit of a problem with it if you don't you could try to make its way through like I believe it's trying to do right now let me catch this get it small right <laughs> and whoop. Now, you guys have seen me use this pink yarn before um, when making my shawl. And I put that in the hashtag history bounding months ago. I might like reshare that with them. And, uh, oh, I do find that Kathy Hay and Morgan Donner, uh, it's probably Morgan Donner, um, <laughs> is, uh, part of the hashtag history bounding. And like I said, there's such an, 
a quite acceptable community. For making such historical garments, whether it be something a bit of an extan garment from medieval era, just something from last century. Say in the 70s, something from the 60s or 70s. They're very accepting. And I love their garments. Their garments are beautiful. And then when one history bounder, she was saying um, that she wouldn't, you know, she would like to wear her dress every day or as much as she could, but she knows that wouldn't go over in today's, you know, like the way we dress. So I was thinking to myself, I can redesign the top half of it. And make it so it's actually more wearable of what she's wearing. Absolutely. Just redesign and uh, post it for her. She used some really pretty black tulle, which I know I should have got that from Sam's Fabric before they went out of business. <laughs> Almost got some black tulle and some black horse hair. Horse hair isn't really made out of horse hair. It's just, it's called that because of the texture. And what they used to use back then. Ugh. Why is it not going through this one? See, this is being a little nitty on me. And this is why I say try to make sure that these aren't too tight. There we go. I would love to see Morgan Donner show how she makes this wonderful square pattern in her knitting. Like, I know you're such a sewer, but you also do fantabulous knitwork. Saw that on Instagram. Because I saw it on Instagram. <laughs> anyway. I'm not going to stop this video and we're only like eight minutes and something into this. I'm actually having fun like just showing you how to basically, and this is such fine, such a fine yarn. I mean, look at that. So far that, that's pretty nice. Okay, you see how that slipped off? You keep those three in line and slip them back on. You're good. And just keep on working your yarn. Now pretty soon I will be uh, crocheting again. It's not for a crochet collaboration with anybody else. It's a collaboration with Sin City Soaps and Candles. So, um, but I also thought maybe I would get back in the habit of knitting because I haven't done that in a while. Let me show you how pretty that is now. See how it's actually turning out kind of pretty. And then again, you turn it, your tail is back here now instead of being in the front. That's right.
then just continue. So that's basically what your uh, single chain for this would be. It's just loop it like that. Uh, like I was saying, I've never, no, maybe I didn't even say that. I've never knit one purl two. I have never gotten into doing that. I should learn just to learn it. Just, just, just say that I've learned it. You can never learn enough. As long as it doesn't harm anyone. Um, you can never learn enough. Then I will show you how fine this is as soon as I'm done with it. So this is the third row. And I'm just doing this to practice. Just because I haven't knit in a while. And so crocheting lately and sewing that I haven't knit in a long time. And I need to get back into knitting. This can be very tasking and it does take a very long time. It's an art. Okay. Spread that out. Show that to you. This is just from one side. Look at that. And this is what it looks like from this side. It's actually pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. The knit stitches are actually pretty nice. And like I said, I haven't knit in a while. Hey, there's my tentacle. Anyway. <laughs> right? There's my tentacle. <sighs> always kind of make fun of that, like these are like alien antennae. This is an art form where you actually talk less than you do. Um, put this down here, sorry about that. This is an art form where you actually talk less. It's almost like doing an ASMR. <laughs> You know what? 
I'm glad to see that Jeffrey Stars is going to be getting back in the swing of things with his makeup. Yeah. Good for you, sweetie. Don't ever let anybody hold you back. She has the uh, new um, blood sugar three palette. I didn't know that the blue blood was considered part of the blood sugar line, but I guess, yeah. I guess it is. And maybe he will go on that tour, who knows? Don't let nobody hold you back. And, uh, yeah, basically once you get to learning, you go quicker on knitting. And, uh, this is only 20 and this could go longer. And that's, that's pretty much how you'd want it to be if you want something bigger. Um, I would say you could use this just 20 stitches and go really long and make yourself a scarf or a headband or you can make yourself some sort of wristband who knows um well it's not a rock band uh. <laughs> although if you're in a rock band well that can be different <laughs> Like my friend Snake Rob. Oh, he's so cool. And he's actually in a rock band. It's his band and it's called Snake Rock. In fact, Snake actually teaches how to play the guitar. He's the one that's uh, Butch Patrick's guitar teacher. You know who, if you've ever watched The Monsters, you know who Butch Patrick is. Let's see, what am I doing? Nope, we'll take it this way. My brain is going, no. Nah. I don't know if I've had enough coffee today. <laughs> is that sad? Maybe. that around, through. Oh, I'm just wearing my comfy clothes, by the way. If it's loose and comfortable for the weekend, I'm wearing it. Absolutely. Loop it. And you know, there's actually a lot of men that knit and crochet. Mm-hmm. And it's not just gay men. No. No, sir. It's actually a lot of bikers, um, truckers. There's actually a lot of truckers that do quilting, too. You'd be surprised big burly guys doing knit, crochet, and quilting. Sometimes I'll uh, get together somewhere and put together a quilt for a, a function and 
You know, I think that's cool. bad people around the world just can't like be peaceful like that and just like sit and sit and have a, a knitting circle and you know whoever's knit comes out the worst you got to go <laughs> But yeah, like I was saying, I wish Morgan Donner would teach those cute knit squares that I saw on her Instagram. Oh my gosh, Morgan, come on, please. All I know is your, your single, uh, your single knit. Even though I've turned out some really beautiful things with the single knit. I would love to learn how you did that. In fact, I didn't even know that you knit. Until I like saw that on Instagram and I was like, oh. And isn't that, that's kind of cute, Miss. I just like, I really like how this is turning out. Now see something like this, this kind of knit stitch like this, you can make it into uh, like granny square. You can um, do this to make stuff for people's babies. Um, yeah, you can make baby sweaters, baby booties, yeah. And it's such a nice pattern. Mm -hmm. Such a nice pattern on both sides. And uh, I'm not going to keep you on here too long today, but I just wanted to show you this. And then when you pick up another color to go in, you're like, how do we do that? Um... Here's one thing that I always did. It might seem weird to other people. It might seem weird to you. <laughs> but this is what I would always do. If I didn't feel like taking the yarn and cutting it and all the hoopla of everything, take this through. Go ahead. loop it as if it was your working yarn anyway. So it's technically going to be your working yarn. And then you just want to tug that. Okay. And then that tail goes with this tail and you basically want to hold those together while you work this on. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead, go through the front. This is a little trick of mine. Go through the front, pull that through both of them, and then drop it. Now that might be a purl stitch. I'm not sure. Somebody can tell me, please. I'm not sure. Um, and then take it and work it like you would as if this was your pink working yarn. Just keep working it. So that's how I do this. I mean, you don't have to. Maybe you have a whole entire different technique. Um, but once you 
get this back around to the other side, which I will show you. And this is also one way how you can just kind of ombre your yarn together if you think of it that way. Um, absolutely. And like I said, once you get the hang of knit, it's going to be a little more frustrating than crochet. Some people say knit is easier than crochet. <laughs> no. It can be a little more daunting. And then when we get down to the end of this, we'll turn it and then I will show you. Because casting on and doing this, ooh, casting off is a little trickier. Absolutely. You know how they always tell you make your video shorter and you now YouTube is changing their mind. Oh no, make your video longer. And that's how people will find you. Oh, can they make up their mind yet? Okay, see how that came together? Now just turn your work. And it's basically going to be the same thing. But let me move that pink ball of yarn back here. And put the yellow one front. Hold on. Somebody is massaging me. No. No, thank you. Oh! Indeed. That. Why I'm making my YouTube video now. <laughs> oh, it's one of the history bounders that also knits. Was it Morgan? No. It was just one of the other gals on there that knits. But, like I said, just go like that, pull it through, drop that. Pull it through. that through and I love how you're like able to do this 
just, you know, switching up the yarns, not having to clip and make a huge mess, you know, because the end of all this, you can just like look back on your work and be so proud of it, you know? Um, because it's something you've done and something that's worthwhile and may actually last through family members. Um, you know, when you knit or crochet something, you may, you know, you may have family members. All I have is my kids. Only one of them, you know, like, I'm not too mad at that. One of them talks to me maybe one day. The other three will wake up. You know what I mean? one that does talk to me. I'm so proud of you. He um, he just moved into a rental house over the weekend and for what he was paying for rent at an apartment like people please he is saving some money by renting this this house that the landlord's going to let him fix. It's not an ugly house cute little uh, two bedroom one bath and his fiance lives next door to him <laughs> with their with their adopted son and actually I'm very proud of him for helping a child that was basically thrown away by his parents I'm very proud of him for that that's being a real man Okay, and you see, like, that's just going in there like that. Okay, yeah, that loop tried to come off, but not letting that happen, are we? No. No, we're not. So. I said, just continue. That's all you have to do is continue. A flu boo may have happened there. Oh no, oh goodness. Yes, a flu boo happened. What in the heck? Or we may have just picked up an extra loop. Nope, a flu boo. It was a flu boo. accidentally picked up the tail instead of the working yarn. You just have to be careful with that. Like I said, you know, um, I don't know, it's Sunday. I felt just like Pulling out the knitting needles and being a little nitty today. I'd made myself some fried plantains earlier. And my friend was like, what are you making? I'm like, fried plantains. And he had been to Puerto Rico. I've never been to Puerto Rico. He's like, that doesn't smell like the ones I remember in Puerto Rico. I gave him one. He's like, what? These are good compared to the ones I've ever had. Sorry, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I guess the cook must have been having a bad day the day he was there. 
trying to eat some plantains. I gave him a bad plate. I think maybe I told him the difference. I'm like, if they cook the green plantains, they'll taste funny. But if they cook the yellow plantains, that's the ones you want. That yellow plantain. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. always like the yellow plantain better. Well, they're sweet. That would be why. Eh, trying to get this through here. And he was like, oh, I didn't know the difference. He's like, also, you put garlic with it instead of uh, whatever they didn't do. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Titi Elsa told me, put the garlic with it, maybe some hot sauce. The hot sauce is good with it. Trust me. Hot sauce and garlic with plantains. Oh, yeah. Okay, I just want to show you how a little bit better how this is coming out. See what I mean? Look at those rows. Those rows have come out nice, even though, like I said, you know, I'm working with the yellow yarn up next to the pink yarn, and that's still cute. And then when you go along like that, and you eventually get, you know, something finished, um, no matter what it is, I might make this thing into a washcloth for myself. I don't know. I've been wanting to make a washcloth for myself. And with my leftover yarn, I might as well use it up, right? It's better to use up what you have for yourself than leave everything sitting. Because yarn actually has a shelf life. Don't think it doesn't. I've seen some old yarn just like you got to use it and it's all like, all over the place. Trust me, it does that. So, um, yeah, I hope that you had a good weekend. Um, I hope that this helped you uh, go to learn something. I know I didn't do the casting off because now I'm literally going to make this into something today. Maybe I'll show it to you later. You never know. Although I do have something else I need to finish today, which means I can always put down my knitting and finish the other thing today because I'm almost done with the Rindy Ray's little Joey's new set of clothes since I flew booed and didn't know the size, the exact size of little Joey and uh, his clothes were too small his hat was too big blah things happen so yep absolutely things happen And uh, I hope you try the technique of switching your yarn like I showed you instead of, you know, going on the daunting task of clip and 
have all this extra just hanging because this is going to save you some stressful time and you know I should say some time and not be so stressed about it done with this row I'm going to end the video but I will show this to you before I go and then I'll be back with it as soon as it's finished like I'm having fun doing this it's actually helping my arthritis I have bad arthritis and uh there we go I don't know. I just kind of like these colors together. What do you think? That light 